President Biden will arrive in New York City for a meeting of the United Nations General Assembly. But with multiple crises, both at home and abroad, many analysts say that this isn't necessarily how Mr. Biden wanted to go into this gathering. White House correspondent Emerald Robinson is in Washington with the very latest on that. Hi, Emerald. Hi, Heather. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. The Biden administration thought for the president's first address before the U.N. General Assembly uh, body that he would be in a very different position, that he would have, uh, you know, better relationships with our allies. That's what he came into office saying his goal was to do, to put America back on the global stage and to promote global globalism, internationalism and multilateralism uh, once again for the United States. However, the situation he is walking into tomorrow as he gives his first address is one where allies are questioning uh, the trustworthiness of the United States. Press Secretary Jen Psaki in the briefing that just ended about a minute ago had to address the president's crisis and credibility. Criticism of a decision is different from criticism of the credibility and leadership of the United States, broadly speaking. But the larger point here, and what you'll hear the president talk about tomorrow, is that we are committed to those alliances. Clearly, the, one of the major, if not most major, issues that our allies have right now is the uh, nature of the withdrawal from Afghanistan and most recently the drone strike that resulted in the deaths of casualties. Instead of the ISIS-K targets, the administration tried to say in the beginning were actually killed in that drone strike. Now, today, Jen Psaki sidestepped. Uh, answering our question about whether anyone would be held accountable for that, suggesting instead that the president uh, supports a, a thorough investigation. Also, uh, on the minds of world leaders is what we're seeing at the, the southern border, the, the humanitarian crisis that is growing now with Haitian refugees, ha Haitian migrants surging the southern border and some very disturbing images from that as the president tomorrow goes to talk specifically as well about human rights abuses. Some foreign leaders from other countries suggesting that the United States has no uh, place in doing that right now. And a third crisis majorly affecting this president is this growing tension with uh, what is usually a strong ally of his, the French President Emmanuel Macron, in which uh, Macron and his government has pulled diplomats out of the United States, UK and Australia. Heather. And I understand that Jen Psaki was also asked about that, about Biden and Macron speaking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was actually a very clever question, kind of tongue in cheek, in which Jen Psaki was asked, is, is France sending the U.S. calls to voicemail? Listen. We're in, yes, we're in active conversation about a call. You want to make sure you weren't being sent to voicemail or anything like that? No, I, I don't think so. <sighs> she said no. And she said that uh, the two countries are in active conversation about the phone call. She first suggested that it is solid that the French have committed but in her actual answer, it sounded a little more like the the France uh, the French aren't quite there yet. Though they, Jen said, they expect to have a call within several days from now. Yeah, she Heather. said, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Emerald. Uh, joining us now to discuss further is Vice President of the Heritage Foundation, Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always great to have you on. Uh, we were just discussing with Emerald, I'm sure you heard, all of the multiple issues facing this Biden administration as he heads to the U.N., the withdrawal from Afghanistan, the drone strike at the Kabul airport, uh, the southern border situation with the Haitian migrants, not to... Um, not to leave out, of course, the tension going on right now with France. What do you feel this administration needs to do as they head into the U.N.? Look, nobody questions mm -hmm. the U.S. commitment to our allies. What they, what they question is the competence of this president and this administration. And actually, what I, what I know is going to happen is the president is going to go to the United Nations and he is going to double down on stupid and argue that his Afghan policy was exactly the right decision. This would be like, you remember the Showgirls, that horrible movie in the 90s? This would be like the director of the Showgirls going, going up to the, to the, uh, at the Oscars and saying, everybody has to see my movie. Uh, so it just, it just makes the, the administration look incredibly feckless 
by by essentially not acknowledging their own failures. Yeah, uh, Jen Psaki was also um, she also attempted to explain anyway why this tension with the global community is different from when it arose under President Trump. Listen to this. I also think it's important to note that reestablishing alliances doesn't mean that you won't have disagreements uh, or you won't have disagreements about how to approach any particular issue in the world. That is not the bar for having an alliance and important uh, and, and uh, uh, partnership. You know, is, is it just disagreements or is it really a question of trustworthiness and credibility? Well, if you actually listen to that, if, yeah. if, if she really believes what she said is true, then she should have been a huge fan of the Trump administration, which delivered success after success after success. And what everybody was upset about was the mean tweeting and everything else. So she kind of really kind of stepped on her own words. But look, just look at the the decision of the United States to uh, do a nuclear deal, uh, submarine deal with Australia and the UK. Mm -hmm. First of all, why did that happen when it happened? And the answer is really simple, because so having so bungled Afghanistan, and made just a complete debacle of this with allies. They, the, they, the White House just said, give me something where I can show I'm working with allies. And they said, well, this is in the works. And they go, great, we'll announce that. But nobody had worked it out with France. As a matter of fact, they lied to the French. They actually lied to the French that we were working on this deal. And then they threw it on the table to, to get the press off their back about not working with allies. And then, of course, they look like complete idiots for, for antagonizing the French. This is really amateur hour. You know, when they say the adults are back, well, maybe some of the adults are back in Paris, and maybe the rest of the adults are at Mar-a-Lago, but, but they're not in the White House doing foreign policy. Yeah, I mean, it, we use words like uh, bungled, and, and we laugh about it, but this could have long-term implications when it comes to the way the United States is thought about in the rest of the world. I, I really think this boils down to a question of, the competence of this president and this team. And remember, this this is a team that has eight years of experience over President Obama. So they can't argue it's about rookie mistakes. It can't argue, well, you know, this is the first time. These guys are demonstrating failure after failure after failure, and people see that. So again, this is a Jimmy Carter moment. It's not that people are losing faith in America, but they absolutely question whether America is well led by this president. And so, look, I talk to Europeans, I talk to other countries all the time. You know what they talk to me about? Who's going to be up in 2024? Because they're already looking past this person and saying, who can lead America to do the kinds of things we need America to do in the world today? Because they don't think this administration is up to it. That's not a partisan comment. Mm -hmm. That's not me. That's what people around the world are saying to me. Yeah, but James, 2024 is a long time away. And look at the damage that's been done in just this brief amount of time. Um, a lot more could be done. So what needs to change in order to not wait until 2024? Well, I think, I think there are a lot of things. I think the more transparency and understanding there is of this administration, the more people are unhappy with it, the more that acts like a break on this administration jumping out and doing things. So that's why, for example, I do think we need a 9-11 style commission on mm -hmm. Afghanistan, provide transparency to the American people, let them see what the government does so they can get feedback to this government and say, look, we are not happy with this. And this is just not Washington, but our allies and the American people as well. That's the only break on this administration because if people, when they keep saying these ridiculous things that they're doing a great job and everything's perfect, if they don't hear this tsunami of feedback saying, no, you're screwing everything up, then there, there's no other break to slow them down. Yeah, um, just start recognizing the reality of the situation and not lying to the American people about it. Begin there. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano, thank you as always for joining us. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.